Protests were continuing in the Twin Cities and other cities after Minnesota police officer Geronimo Yanez was acquitted Friday in the killing of Philando Castile, an African-American man who was shot five times during a traffic stop last year. We go now to Minneapolis, where we're joined by Nakima Levy-Pound. She's former president of the Minneapolis NAACP and is now running for mayor of Minneapolis. Welcome to Democracy Now! Can you talk about your reaction uh, to the verdict and then the protests that followed? in the Twin Cities, Nakima? Well, number one, I thought that the the result of the jury in finding Euronimo Yanez not guilty was absolutely absurd in light of the facts of the case, in light of the circumstances surrounding Philando Castile's untimely death. And people here are outraged. Time after time again, we see circumstances in which officers who kill are not held accountable under the laws. You encountered several police officers on bicycles. This is a clip of you addressing the officers. What we're saying is, if you call yourself a good cop, but you see one of your colleagues beating somebody or disrespecting them or treating them like they're less than human, then report them. That's what a good cop does. A good cop you all to step up, exhibit more leadership, and work to build trust within the community. And if the government isn't going to hold you all accountable, hold yourselves accountable. Thank you. Um, can you uh, talk about what you were asking for and demanding? When we're out on the streets protesting, when we're raising concerns about police violence, the pushback is often that, you know, well, there are good cops out there. You know, these are just a few bad apples. When in reality, there is a culture of policing that needs to be addressed. There's a culture of militarization amongst the police that need to be um, addressed. There's a culture that allows police officers to kill people with impunity and to not be held accountable. We don't get uh, the same deference as, as far as whether we're a good person or a bad person. A lot of us are judged, just as Philando Castile was, by the color of his skin. When Yanez said that he had a wide-set nose and looked like a robbery suspect, and unfortunately he was mistaken, but the color of his skin wound up being a death sentence. If you're a good officer, then don't falsify reports. Don't go along with police brutality and abuse and think that it's enough just because you may not have participated. A good cop is actually going to report the conduct of bad cops and push to hold them accountable so that they can build trust within the community. And I believe that that's part of the message that needs to be spread throughout the United States. What exactly is a good cop? And what standard of care are we holding them to? Your sense of how the political leadership of your area has responded to these cases? Well, the political leadership in our area has responded very poorly. I mean, I've seen this play out over the years. In addition to being the former president of the Minneapolis NAACP, I'm also a civil rights attorney. I was a law professor for 14 years. And what I saw were government leaders, including DFL, which is, you know, our Democratic Farm and Labor Party, um, here in Minnesota, basically, essentially not being focused on these particular issues, uh, ignoring concerns from communities of color about the ways in which people of color were being treated by the police, abused by the police. And Betsy Hodges was one of those people. We're ready to shift the paradigm in the city and to ensure that we're actually focusing on equity, that we're holding police officers accountable, that we're looking at racial disparities across every key indicator of quality of life, including economics. If you look at the plight of African Americans in the city of Minneapolis, you have African American men in some pockets of the city facing double digit unemployment. Those men are often subjected to police abuse to uh, harassment and criminalization, and the matters are not being addressed simply because the state is deemed to be liberal. Um, I, I see um, the, um, the recognition of Minneapolis and the state of Minnesota uh, as being liberal places, as masking the truth of what African Americans and other people of color here are facing, which are uh, conditions that are reminiscent of the Jim Crow South, except that we call it the Jim Crow North here.